Hi, this is Mike from EVSwap. Today we're going to take apart this Tesla large drive unit, at least the inverter side, and we're going to put in a new control board. So let's get started. The tools you're going to need are a 4mm hex key, a plastic pry tool, a 13mm socket, T30 Torx, T10 Torx, and a small flathead screwdriver. To get started, I used a screwdriver to pull off the wiring harness. Then I used the Allen key to start taking off the orange cover. It required me to use a, a little pry bar and be careful because there are a couple of little O-rings inside there that you don't want to damage. And finally, the T10 is used to take out the four screws around that wiring port. Next, you'll use your 13 millimeter socket to pull out the two bolts that hold the cables in place. You can see this is what the bolts look like. And finally, you can pull the cables out. They are different lengths from the left and the right, so you don't have to worry about getting them confused. Uh, you wouldn't be able to get them back in if they weren't correct. Here you're going to use the T30 to remove all the screws around the perimeter of this cover. And once they're off, you can see you just sort of wiggle the cover off and uh, it pulls straight out. It's pretty simple. All right, so at this point, we're just going to remove the clips that are along the perimeter of the car. They're are two connectors on the side there and then I think there are five along the bottom. A couple things you might notice is I'm actually working sort of upside down under the drive. It's just where the board was. And the other thing you might notice is that's not an original Tesla board that's in the drive. So I, okay. I bought this drive from Stealth EV. It already had a board in it but I managed to damage that board because I'm a knucklehead when it comes to electronics. So I'm basically replacing uh, an aftermarket board. So here you'll see we're removing the screws. The nice thing about working upside down is that if I were to drop a screw, it wouldn't go down deep inside the inverter. Instead, it would just drop on the floor. In fact, I think I actually did that one time. All right, hold on. Here comes the miracle of fast forward. Okay, so at this point you can see there's the shield that kind of sits behind the board and probably protects it from interference. And the shield and the board kind of use the same screws. The shield kind of gets Siamese between the board and the inverter mount there. And, and so if you'd like to see how you should not try and reinstall the new board, uh, this is an excellent example. Because I fiddle with this for several minutes trying to get the screw to go through the board, through the shield, into the mount and uh, it's just not pretty. So I'm going to save you the agony of watching that and we'll fast forward to where I figured out a better way to do it. Okay, so what I figured out was it was a lot smarter to go ahead and clip all of the connectors back into the board because what this did was it sort of held it in place and held the shield in place uh, once, once it got behind there. And then it was a lot easier to thread a screw through the board, through the shield, and into the mount. So you'll see here in just a second that that it goes together really uh, much nicer. And then I go back and I just double check all the connections to make sure that they're good. So here goes. We'll fast forward, but you can still sort of see how I, how I did this by putting the shield in behind. This may have been out of order. Oh, never mind.
All right. Okay, so now we're gonna slide the cover back on. It goes on pretty easily. Uh, there's a seal there at the end you gotta be careful about. And then also where the uh, main wiring harness comes out, it just kind of floats. So you have to uh, make sure that it's aligned properly and then it'll everything will go back straight. <clears throat> and then the last step is to go in and install each of these uh, T30 headed uh, screws that go all the way around the perimeter of the cover. Okay, it's time to install the high voltage cables and I'd mentioned before there are actually two different lengths so you really can't mess this up. Uh, they, uh, you can't cross the minus and the positive on them. And uh, so you drop them in and then you can sort of align the hole that that 13 millimeter uh, bolt goes into. So we'll drop uh, both the bolts in. Next we'll put the orange cover on with the uh, four millimeter Allen head screw and then we'll put in the main wiring harness. Okay, here we go. So the new board is in. We uh, turn the car on. You can hear the pre-charge relay turning on. And then we press the start button, and then that should make the major contactor connect, and you can hear it. Very distinctive clunk. And we shall put it in drive. And hit the gas, the trusty gas pedal. And there it is. Of course, it's going backwards, I think. That looks like it's going backwards to me, even though it's in drive. So. Must have messed something up there, but it's alive! So if you're interested, this is the ultimate destination for the Tesla large drive unit. It is a um, 1984 uh, Porsche 911 convertible originally, which is sort of a narrow body, and it's a bit of a Frankenstein. It's been adapted over to have a uh, the 911 wide body fenders and wheels and control arms and brakes and all that fun stuff. And uh, so this is where the Tesla drive is going along with the uh, Chevy Volt battery that you may have noticed in the videos as well. So if you're interested in following along with this build, subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.